You're watching Fraggle Rock. I mean, on approach. This is episode 65. Hello, Captain. On Approach is a Flight Sim and Aviation Enthusiast podcast featuring the week's top user submitted stories and news on the Skylounge.tv. Welcome to another show, everybody. Yo. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, with us today, uh, down below the maple syrup can. It's we, me. It's you with the crazy hair. Your hair inspired that intro, by the way. I hope Whoa. you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, what dude, you I need what? to tell you something. Tell me. I, f I found a barber shop here. Oh, a vintage called, one? It's called Al's Barbershop. Shut up, bro. Come on. I kid you not. This is the best barbershop around town. It's called go, go to Al's it. Barbershop. And every time I go to San Francisco to meet with Mr. Edson, we go to that barbershop. That's tradition, Al's man. Barbershop. We go to Al's and, Barbershop. Um, yeah. Yeah, Alameda. So when I realized I was actually driving to the place, when I realized, dude, this is the same name. <laughs> That's as awesome. The one in Alameda. That's <laughs> really, it, it's really vintage, just like we... Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you found a place. Look, man, if you want a good cut, you go to like a vintage barbershop, like a proper gentleman's barbershop, or you go to the ghetto. And my man Noodle, I know you know what's up. You want a tight fade? You go to the place where you're going to get some DVDs sold to you, some bootleg CDs. <laughs> you might get some sneakers sold to you while you're sitting in the chair. Like those are the two spots, man. Everything in between, waste of money. Absolutely. And that's just the way it is, you know, and sadly, uh, a lot of people will would balk at the idea. Oh, I'm not going down or get or get a haircut or this that, and the other. It, you're missing opportunity. You're missing yeah. some of the best people who are going to care about what they're doing to shape and shave your head on all that. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend going with somebody who knows a spot. Do it once. And I guarantee you're going to have a, the best cut ever and you'll continue to come back and they will remember you and they'll know what they'll need to do every time you walk in. Yeah. So do it at least once. That's the money, man. And if you come down to the bay, we're going to Al's. That's just how it works. If you come yeah. down to the bay, we're going to Al's. So uh, speaking of. Sparky's next, man. He's next. So we've been there for with, with, the with bro. Look. <laughs> then, 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 then a proper hot shave, straight razor, baby, straight yeah, razor, that yeah. proper shave. That's the thing. They'll, be careful of they'll my cut neck, up here. They'll cut right here razor because I, I got a very sensitive neck. So when oh. they if they use a straight razor on my neck, I get a rash. So. Fucking smack his neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a sensitive skin, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oh, Spike Smudge. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. So, Sparky, I did wear a special shirt for you today. I see it. Yeah. What is that? Uh, this is Java Red's House. Java House. Red's Java House. It's iconic here in the Bay Area. Uh, my very good friend, Sean, was the owner of Red's Java House for a very long time. Uh, he has since moved on to another venture just recently within the past few years. But my son had his birthday party here, uh, a, a superhero birthday party where... I got to kind of live out one of my my own dreams where I went to the kitchen and I said, you see this plate, fill it with pancakes as high as you can because it was a superhero party. And I said, just just the, ta the imaginable tower of pancakes, do it. And they fucking just kept going with the pancakes and the kids were going <laughs> crazy. It was amazing. Anyways, amazing place, Res Java House. It's still there. It's right under the uh, the Bay Bridge as you get into San Francisco. Shoot right off on the left. We'll go. We'll go to Red yep, Java House. Absolutely. We'll have a nice, uh, you know, morning morning breakfast there. It's real basic. Everything's basic, basic. It's a basic burger, basic coffee, basic breakfast, but really good. And it's all about the view, man. The Bay Bridge yeah. is like right there, right there. So it'll be cool. That's excellent. Yeah, looking forward to it, man. I'm a little jealous. 
<laughs> two weeks, goddamn. <laughs> Dude, yeah, this, this is all get kind of crazy. So, like, these two are coming to San Francisco, uh, and then we are road tripping down to you, Noodle. Yeah, yeah. So, we're road just, tripping uh, to Vegas, man. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, like I said in, in the post and the, on the site, our, our website and all, I mean, I guess I'll meet you guys. I mean, it's a 15-minute <laughs> drive for me from my house down to the Strip. Did you, so. did you get your tickets finally? It's, uh, yeah, I, I got mine. Yeah, I did. Um, I bought them late, but, you know, it was like 45 bucks for the day or whatever. So, but, you know, it, it doesn't matter. No, you know what? I didn't do that. I, uh, I did. want to see it first. Uh, I'm the I'll same, bro. It. I'm the same. Yeah. I'm like, let me see that shirt first. Yeah. Let me see yeah, what I'm going to be wearing, bro. I don't want to get bro. burned. Yeah. Don't be giving don't me no burned. no half-ass Michael's ironed on fucking t-shirt, man. I want to <laughs> see this. Are we talking silk screen? Are we talking quality. iron on? Yeah, it's got to be yeah. that yeah. quality. It's gotta be exactly. Quality. Because, you know, this is my first uh, sim convention that I've ever been able to go to. Uh, hopefully not my last. And I don't want to buy... I don't want to pre-order a shirt and then i get it and it's like really it just says flight sim con vegas 2018 wait That's wait it. flight sim expo bro oh, oh, sim expo. oh no whoa <laughs> now <laughs> whoa now <laughs> easy yeah, well, easy <laughs> uh, in, in in post what we'll do is uh gents uh, when that comes up you'll hear a beep, you know, like you see on TV. They never happen. Oh, I have Holy ideas. shit, I said that. <laughs> good, 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 good. We'll, we'll roll with it. Like the Mexico. But, uh, yeah, it, it's got to be a nice shirt, you know. I yeah. that's I, I can't buy something sight unseen, so. I don't know. The chances of it being a nice shirt are very slim in my mind. Uh. <laughs> Well, I've ordered it anyway, so I'm going to get one, whether it's shit or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better I, probably, I, you know, I, they'll have I'm, others. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Kevin. I've seen Orbex's lanyards, fucking shoelace, <laughs> fucking shoelace. We show up with full color satin lanyards, and they got fucking shoelaces for lanyards. I was like, get this. Dude, thing no, on. I don't. I don't agree <laughs> with you on that. I really did like those. Shoelaces. I did not like the I really shoelaces, bro. Li I, I did like the material. Orbex. Not a fan. Not a fan. For, uh, why? Because no. it because it kept you warm in Canada. That's why. Because it was because like it's some soft. <laughs> it's oh, soft and uncomfy. Yeah, it's Canadian shoelaces. He could take them off. Canadian shoelaces if he needs to. <laughs> yeah, my shoelaces broke. Hey, I got a lanyard. <laughs> All right, folks. So this is the uh, the part of the show we call the run up. Kind of leads us into the show, gets everybody hyped up about a topic. Um, it's our, our way of interacting with you, the viewers. Um, each host will take a moment and have a chat about something they either loved or hated that happened during the week. Uh, here we go. We'll start with uh, Mr. Noodle over on that side. Go for it, nudes. Okay. Well, uh, for me, uh, it's DCS. Uh, so this week we'll get the new Persian Gulf map, um, and then next week uh, we get the Hornet. Um, it was going to be the other way around from a video I watched today uh, from this guy named Matt Wagner, one of the main guys uh, at uh, Eagle Dynamics, specifically I believe just on the Hornet itself. But they wanted to add a few more key things and all to make sure it's ready and what the customers would expect on a on a beta, alpha, whatever release. So. Um, so in one more week, which is fine, looking forward to that, and uh, really eager. And um, I picked up, you know, non-flight sim thing. I picked up State of Decay 2, a zombie survival thing. Uh, I've never really played a, a survival game, though I bought Ark. And I, I don't know, I, I had fun, but it just, I wasn't feeling it. But since I, I bought the Ultimate Pack, I got it a few days early to play. And I, that's all I've been doing it, and, and I'm loving it. It's been pissing me off. Running I got straight to K1. I got the first one and kind of got bored of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I since I've never played, I have I have no prior anything on it. So right now I'm really enjoying it. Night times are uh, it, it it's crazy. There's been times where I'm like, whoa, shit, I've done that, and I'm like, what the fuck? But I've had to do a couple of restarts because I lost too many people. You only get one life. 
and you play multiple people. You don't create your own character, which I did not know, but I still would have bought it anyway. But I'm really enjoying it. So four player co-op. Um, it's a nice break from everything else. So co-op with some friends, go nuts, run around, smack down zombies, build your community and find cool shit. So I, I'm really enjoying it. Nice, nice, nice. All right, Mrs. Parker, what you got? Ah, uh, what have I got? I, I got a, I got a pet hate I'm going to bring up and it's phone zombies. It's people walking around like this. Mm. Oh, and it fucking noise the hell out of me. But you know what annoys me even worse is people have their headphones in. Yeah. Okay. And on the headphones, as you know, there's, there's this part. Yeah the controls yeah. it's also a speaker so you don't need to fucking hold the phone like this when you got the headphones in <laughs> <laughs> yes Dumbass. there you go yes Good one. bro i'm with you on that i'm with you on that <laughs> mr kevin what you got like i've been out all week um yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's oh, something I'm curious. Sir, something I'm curious actually. It's it's more than a week. It's been more than a week now. But TFDI released their perform Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> TFDI released uh, a performance update. I'm curious to know uh, if you guys noticed any difference in performance. Um, That's to the seven six seven. Yeah. Seven one seven one seven one seven. Sorry. One, yeah. Seven, yeah. One. Because I don't know if a lot of people flying it, but I'm curious to see if if it's a like a major difference after a week of usage. Like I know some people like to fly the the thing for extended extended periods of the time. But yes, I can't speak. So just let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to see if uh, what your guys' feedback is on that. But that's pretty much it. My week. I've been out all week, so I'm not even. <laughs> I I arrived literally home less than an hour ago from the entire week so true yeah. thank you for joining us as tired as i know you are all right so um i'm gonna just kind of tag on uh onto last week's the community jumped out to help with my whole 4k ultra wide dilemma uh shout out to os flight simmer uh shout out to everyone that 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 tried to help um i was i was open to trying every bit of, of feedback and suggestion like i was willing to try anything i have good news as of about an hour ago <laughs> i finally got things to where it is very very smooth when there's no weather and then when active sky is loaded it's still very smooth um granted there's a hit that's natural when you run, you know, uh, a heavy weather program and, and rain and, and big clouds and whatnot. But it's very, very small to hit. Um, my solution, I wish I could go into deep detail, but I basically threw everything out. Uh, I reset my NVIDIA inspector profile to default. I, I, I eliminated Sim Starter from the mix. Uh, so that I didn't have any polluted uh, CFG files for uh, prepared 3D. I made sure that I had no tweaks being inserted uh, by my PTA profile, which I did. I, I built some into my PTA profile so that when you hit apply, like it puts tweaks into the CFG. Uh, I removed those tweaks. I unchecked that. Um, and then I deleted the prepared uh cfg file and let it rebuild completely fresh so now i started off with a completely blank slate i removed all overclocking from my processor all overclocking from my gpu like completely back down to bare minimum and retuned everything fresh um i am now running uh, uh an nvidia inspector file with the only tweak being uh, refresh rate to half and uh, the sim is basic as well with nothing more than the affinity mask added 
So the clean. refresh rate to half that gives you what? Uh, how it many? makes it, it basically slices the sixty hertz refresh rate down to thirty, but it's like it's milky smooth. Okay. It's a beautiful, so a beautiful touch. Thirty now. Smooth. Well, it's still, it's still technically producing a smooth sixty on screen, but it, it's it's only like, it's like resyncing every, it's resyncing at thirty mark. So it, it's it's hard to explain. I did way too much reading on anti-aliasing and G G sync and V sync and when to use which. It's been a pain, but I'm happy to re report that. Things seem to be on the up and up, and I want to thank everyone that, that reached out in private messages, on the website, on the YouTube comments to try and help, man. I love this community. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see right here to the side in the number one spot this week, Ivana Fly. She's climbed right back up to her number one spot. Uh, number two, Tomcat UK, followed closely by Mr. Gibbon, Angeli662 in the fourth spot, Osflight Simmer in number five. Then we have Chemo NL, Flyby, Nick Flight X, Air Geno, and last but definitely not least, Mr. Beach 8 nh A reminder that we have no show unless you submit topics and news. We're happy to discuss anything you want some advice on, different viewpoints on, clarification on, whatever it may be. Head over to theskylounge.tv and submit a post so that we have more to talk about next week. Thank you. First one submitted by Tomcat UK. First class passenger removed from American Airlines flight for passing drinks to economy uh, a first-class passenger who ordered six shots on an American Airlines flight was removed after trying to take some to his friends traveling in economy the man ordered the complimentary drinks before the doors had even closed on flight 1862 from Philly International Airport on Saturday he then attempted to take some of the tipples to his friends flying in economy class before being removed from the plane Holy crap. <laughs> I tell you this what, crazy. Like, you know, good effort. Good effort. You know, he, he got kicked <laughs> off, but good effort. But dude, well, I mean, let, let, let's say, let's say, let's say he took a shot. <laughs> ah, <laughs> nice. I see what you did there. He sure as hell did, didn't he? I mean, uh, Ordering drinks before the doors even close. I didn't think they would even let you do that. Honestly, sometimes no. I have oh, I yeah. have a weird. Oh, they do. They do. They do. In first class, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they'll give they'll give anything to you if you're. In Bro, first class. I, I I've I've walked I've walked onto a plane with a runny nose and asked for a napkin, and they told me they'll get me one when we sit down. <laughs> like, yeah, but you were in economy. Dude. Yeah, you there's in that. First class. There yeah. you go. I don't oh, know. This, man. this whole thing is, you know, they're going to kick this guy off for doing that. And I think what's going to happen is with the many things that are happening with the, uh, with well, the American airline system, there's going to be a lot of sweeping changes. And I think there's going to be another one. I think it's kind of ridiculous that they're going to kick this guy off for <laughs> doing something that they allowed to happen. You shouldn't have been serving the drinks beforehand, in my opinion. That That's just me. Yeah. Well, I think you shouldn't pass on drinks to economy, regardless of the state of the flight. It's just that when it's mid-flight, they can't kick him off. Yeah, it's a perk, it's right? A like, it's a, it's a perk yeah. of first class. It's a perk yeah. of first class. And yeah. so, you know, I think that's where, that's where the rule was broken. So they're um, mad it's because... Like, it's, it's just like if we had, a, a, like, patrons, okay? like game wisp and we made exclusive video for patrons but then people consuming those videos would share it with their friends that are not patrons. yeah yeah it's a perk yeah it's a perk of that it's, that class it's an exclusive perk yeah but is said perk and perks uh something that they would have been aware of that they can and cannot do because would any of us now i've never known no i wouldn't have known that you could not go and give someone that you're flying with 
was unable to get a first class seat and you wouldn't slid them a drink would anybody know that that is illegal or illegal you know so i don't think it's I, illegal i think it's just against their rules yeah but it's like, common sense you, as well is it you know that that's the thing we may see it as such but the opportunist and i can yeah. be an opportunist the opportunist hey yeah. look you did not specifically state show I me not, where it says yeah i did not sign anything or read anything that said i could not do this so in two this weeks guy time would... in two weeks time yeah. i'm flying to san francisco with mr edson and i'm gonna be in economy plus it's not economy it's economy plus so i get a meal and drinks but I don't get complimentary drinks. But if anyone is actually in business class and they want to slip me a couple, you know, <laughs> <laughs> 22A. <laughs> but here's the thing. Nice. The, the, events, events like this is a reason why we have stickers all over goddamn cars in America, right? Because companies, to protect themselves, they have to, to say every little possible thing they can do. Yeah, like, yeah cruise control on an rv like you don't get up and make yourself a coffee it doesn't work that way you know there's a sticker <laughs> for that and that's why we're so stupid right now is because stupid things well, like that happen. well because everything well, needs to be explained right for the opportunists the is, of the world but it, right but, but again keep but keep but keep in mind though an opportunist is going to see it and take advantage but just remember now what was the back mid 80s or whatever what that lady sued what was it mcdonald's over the coffee and got for the paid. coffee being hot <laughs> yes so this is another one you know this guy could potentially have a case i would feel you kicked me off but you did not state i could even do this or not so, so do you think you kick me off the plane you know do you think if he it just written somewhere do you think that if he if he if he didn't push it right obviously this guy pushed it it's he he took five drinks he or took whatever back he took In, instead of taking like one. Yeah, yeah. You know, if he took one, they probably wouldn't had so big of an issue, right? It's kind of like going in with your one friend to the all you can eat buffet, right? Like you go and they obviously know motherfucker's holding one plate, but he's got two friends, you know. And and but if you go in with like your five homies and you have one plate at the all you can eat buffet, there's gonna be a problem. <laughs> but, but, but the last thing though on it is too but in the end if you think about it, whose fault was it him for doing it or for the person who kept giving this guy drinks when they know they're serving multiple drinks to one person okay shouldn't that have not raised the flag before they even closed the damn door and left you know or it, it, it's it's also a foul on them they kept serving it this is. guy drinks. If he ended know. up with five drinks before the fucking door even closed, bro, there's a problem with the airline too. Yeah, yeah, I they, agree. they fucked I agree. up too. So I very appropriately, I feel, utilized this gif. Does anyone remember this game? Can you name this game? That oh, is familiar. Buddy, buddy or something. I can't remember what it was called. Sparky of, it was. of, of but, all the yeah, people I here, of all was the people Bob here. Wolves? I thought Sparky would be the one to catch this. This is Tapper. Tapper. Yeah. Tapper. That's and, the and, name. and 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 it was like I mean it's like pay, it's like playing air traffic controller but with beer at a bar. Like you have to serve <laughs> it and slide it before they slide it back and then you have to get the empty glasses. I thought this was appropriate cuz my man is just slinging the beers down the down the uh, bar. Uh, there were other games like that with food, though. But yeah, that I, I've been staring at that. I'm like, I know this. <laughs> and Tomcat posts some gifts too. Yes, please. He says, "Hey, you guys, happy hours from four to six. <laughs> 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 China Airlines pilot half sucked out of a plane survives. This one submitted by Tomcat UK. A Chinese passenger jet was forced into an emergency landing after its windscreen blew out at 32,000 feet, sucking the co-pilot halfway out of the plane. Captain Liu said the Airbus A319 had been cruising mid-air when a deafening sound flooded the cockpit. There was no warning, he told uh, the Chengdu Economic Daily. The windscreen just cracked and made a loud bang. 
The next thing I knew, my co-pilot had been sucked halfway out. Thankfully, the plane landed safely with only minor injuries reported. So my question to that is, is that a new feature in the FS Labs A319? <laughs> 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 <Who knows? laughs> Maybe. Ah, that's crazy, um, man. It that's so crazy. On. So, so what's, what's the most incredible thing to me is the picture of the cockpit with the uh the controls like ripped off of the cockpit yeah it's completely jacked up like the mcu is like ripped up and and whatnot it's it's crazy man it's crazy um i i'm i'm confused about one thing with this right if a plane is traveling at i don't know what do you say Four or five hundred miles per hour. Yeah, five hundred, right? something like that. Five, let's just, let's just say it's, it's, it's flying at five hundred miles per hour, and the front window breaks out. Yeah. Like, wouldn't there be enough wind coming straight in that front window to actually, instead of suck him out, push him back? Because right, you get a good, so, you get a good I mean, I know there's a change in pressure. But strange pressure, yeah. It's, it's it must be explosive pressure. then. The initial pressure is inward because he did uh, get hurt by um, glass um, shrapnel, we could say. Oh, okay. And so then, definitely something came in, but then explosive yeah. outbound. Yeah, the pressure came in, but then the pressure went out uh, to de depressurize the entire air because you have the, the pressure of the entire airplane against you now because the door is not sealed, I don't believe. So, uh, so yeah, that that's why right. you have both. It really yeah. makes you wonder what's going on right now. You know, this is the second third event where you know a window's been blown out, and not knowing the maintenance schedules and all, I, I would hope that the every airline character or carrier around the world really takes a look at these things i mean i understand that after x many uh, hours they go through maintenance and who who knows what their actual process is but i would hope they're now taking you know big looks at these things and like you know what we should try to cycle our fleet through depot and look at everything so we don't run into an issue like this and it's potentially our fault and we're going to have to shell out money you know for the loss of life and, and everything else so i uh, i hope the industry really takes a hard look at their fleets and gets them through depot i did find this video and full disclaimer here um number one it looks completely real this does not in any way look like cgi um I am not 110% sure that this is from this incident. However, it was uploaded on the date of, and there are no comments, and it's pretty well locked down. Um, and I did read somewhere that it could be, um, that it could have been caused by a faulty uh, windshield heat system. I want you guys to look at this shit and tell me what you think. This is absolutely terrifying. So the way that window heating works, uh, from what I've been told, is that there is a very thin sheet of metal, and I believe it's gold, but I don't know if it's gold. <laughs> There's a very slim sheet going all over the windshield um, that's heating it up universally. Um, and that's yeah. why you see this burning uh, happening there. And I don't know if the yeah i don't know if the burning is the result of the window cracking or the other way around it's a short um it's a short right it, like if there's a film well, it's, it's gonna well it's and gonna there's short. electricity going through that layer of of metal and if you break that metal it it will cause this of course but you know as a pilot when you see this if this is the issue if it's shorting out then the window heat should be the first thing you turn off and then that burning should not happen the other thing that could be happening as well is related to the airspeed and the friction right uh it's causing heat that's another option of things that yeah or you know there's uh, there's if anyone knows 
Yeah, if anyone knows exactly what's happening there, please uh, go in the comments and let us know. Yeah, or or if you can recognize those windshield wipers and say, hey, this is or this is not the 319, you know? Like that, because that's nuts. It, kind of re it reminds me, you know, when you get a, a, a rock that hits your windshield and due to either too much heat, too much cold, you, you know, it starts to just, you know, spider out there. It makes me wonder if there was, say, like an existing, let's say, a crack, and then now it's up at altitude, everything's pressurized, and then they kick in the defroster, and that crack just started to do, you know, came from the bottom, say, bottom right or whatever, and it just started to, camp, you know, travel up and it spider webs out. You know, that this, that's the only thing I could equate seeing something like this is from what I'm seeing on uh, a windshield. Terrifying, uh, nonetheless. Rock. Yeah, but Absolutely in the air, terrifying, Jesus. bro. No thank you. We hope you're enjoying this ad-free podcast and I want to take this moment to thank our patrons that make that possible. Welcoming on board into the Gold Club sponsor tier starting this month, Mr. Branding Iron 1900, also celebrating his two-year mark. A big thanks to all our Gold Club patrons, Mr. Catterly One, also celebrating one year this month, our flight crew patrons, and as always, our ground crew patrons as well. Without your help, none of this would be possible. Quality Wing Simulation Ultimate 787 P3D V4 video. This one posted by SSH. And a big thank you uh, to uh, Nick Flight X. Nick Flight X is, is correct. Uh, that that first posted this over in our Discord. Sky 5, brother. Um, let's check this out. Uh, SSH says it's about time. Quality Wings certainly took their time. That did, did take their time because you don't want a half assed product. <laughs> Absolutely looking beautiful. They got Norwegian. It looks, it looks twenty <laughs> times better in P3D than it did in FSX. Yeah, just like most things, right? The the shadows and the feel of it is just Ethiopian really livery. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. That airplane is photogenic from every angle. I'm gonna need to have this in the hangar, dude. So it has dynamic lighting now. Nice. Too much glass for you though, Edson, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty heavy on the glass, man. Definitely. Though I can say from, you know, because obviously I have it because I do an immersion pack for it. Um, this airplane is the smoothest thing flying in my sim right now really performance oh, yeah. performance is absolutely in incredible that's exciting there the, the are things like uh the the lighting and the some wow. that don't and they don't have animation they're very snappy and they don't feel a hundred percent quality that you would expect from like other developers but that being said the performance is absolutely amazing so i do excuse that you know what else is amazing this production oh yeah absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely beautifully done a tip of the hat for nick flight that is just beautiful it's just great. beautiful um this is a yes from me man there's no doubt about it there's no doubt about it Sky 5 on the story for SSH. This thing looks beautiful. It really does. Any more comments? I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to this one. For sure. Uh, yeah. I've been south. waiting. <laughs> yeah, I've Finally been waiting for this coming. one. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm hoping, I don't know what its overall uh, 
detail fidelity level is as far as you know systems and all that um i i hope it's 80 percent you know at least you know i don't want to feel like it's you know two point and shoot but bar none this is the one aircraft i personally been waiting for as far as a heavy um it's, i i like the the whole shape of the plane which is why i was pretty excited to see that quality wings is doing this yes for me yes for you sparky yep definitely for me Absolutely. yes for noodle this is definitely going to be in the oh yeah. yeah oh yeah i i'm looking forward to yeah, it yeah this looks like a fun one man Turbulent Designs confirms MBS International Airport for X-Plane. Yeah, it's a beautiful airport. We got it for P3D and it is beautiful. So I am going to say the quality is going to be just as good in X-Plane. The lighting will be better though. Yeah, I want to see the inside of it. X-Plane lighting is, yeah. I want to see the bar. The bar. The bar looks like. Yeah, <laughs> at the restaurant. I want to. I want to see at night what it looks like. Oh, the resolution nice of those sexual. textures. Oh, this is good. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's what we have for now. Oh, there's. We still got that old runway. That's that's the uh, the old runway up the way. Yep. Cool. Cool, Good job, cool, cool. Design. Good job. Yeah, overall comments on the Facebook page, all positive too. Like the little dance. And give us says exciting news. <laughs> That's some good stuff, man. I love the Giphy, so keep the Giphy's coming. Use that Giphy button. Airfoil Labs King Air 350 new shots and progress update. More explain news. This one posted by Chemo NL. So, what if, you know, hypothetical, what if they release that airplane before Milvis does? They will. <laughs> they will. I it mean, sure as hell looks I complete. Bet you they will. Look yeah. at this thing. It looks so, so, so good. Like, guys, this is off the rails bananas. Look at the look at the hanging hoses, bro. Look at how they hang. I mean, this is off the rails. Just, just I mean, perfect. engine covers, bro. Yeah, it's got everything. If you like, click it on the link, I'm looking at what their development progress is. They've got so much done. It looks like it's not going to be too much. Uh, it's close, I, I yeah. Real talk, this is the kind of shit that makes me say, the time to switch is near. Like, this is yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, this this level of modeling at the airplane, you know, add-on level, this is the stuff right here. Then you add in the lighting that X-Plane already has, then you add in the texture qualities that X-Plane has. It's building up. Like, it's building up, man. Yep, it is. Look at this. And then more developers as well. More developers jumping in. I mean... Look look at the face of the, of the guy on the left. That's what <laughs> yeah. I was looking at. I was about to say, say the same thing. The guy on the right looks like Woody out of Toy Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like he just got a thumb in his butt, you know. Surprise! <laughs> oh my gosh! Details, details, details. Look at each yeah. LED lens, bro. Each lens in the strobe is 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 looks like it's modeled. They're right. all unique as well, right? Oh it's not God, like bro. they're all different, different angles. <sighs> <laughs> God, this might as well be a, a fucking real photograph, bro. That's the most. I don't think I've seen an engine, uh, <laughs> okay. like with that much detail within it. I mean, the Jesus. only thing, the only thing I'd say is the reflection on the cone is way too sharp. 
Um, so what I like to refer people to is the real Air Duke cones. The way they reflect is a very soft reflection because right now in our it's not sim, mirror. Yeah, we don't yeah. have accurate enough reflections in our sim right now to have it clear like this. It has to be soft. And X-Plane has the capability to do that. So I would highly suggest doing those uh, matte cones. Look at that wing light. But, yeah. Uh, the modeling is is on point. And looking at it, I bet you it has wing flex as well. Probably. Because it seems like the wing is curved downwards a little bit. Well, you know, that's a maybe, maybe not, because something I remember reading a long while back when there was all the yip yap about the 747 uh, wing flex with um, the PMDG thing, which I feel it needs to be adjusted a bit. Um, there are some planes out there that just, they really don't flex. So it makes me wonder if this will flex at all. But they do. They do in turbulence uh, as, as the wing of a Cessna 172 is going to flex in the wind. Well, everything I mean, flexes in the wing. True, but I, I mean, like everybody, it, it, when you look at a lot of these videos and people talk about things, and what's the first thing? Does that have wing flex? Does that have wing flex? Yeah, but I'm thinking, you know, this might, if it has it, it's going to be barely noticeable to the point. Let's say if it's one of those planes where it's barely, barely noticeable in high turbulence that people will probably try to rake this one over to coals because it's like oh there's none there's no wing flex this sucks for a little while the, i was looking matter, for a little while i was looking at these thinking the eye could be tricked with a really really high quality flat texture the eye could be tricked and then, you know, that, that the engine itself is just basically an image. The eye could be tricked at these angles. And then I get to this. There's no yeah. fucking trickery yeah. here. No. This is all yeah. modeled. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks good and accurate. Oh my God. It's delicious. It's dirty. Like an engine yeah. compartment should be. It's gritty. And it feels in there. like. It feels like there is metal in there. It feels heavy when you look yes. at it. It doesn't look hollow. It's like Man, guys. there's definitely guts. There's definitely a heart in here. It doesn't look flat at all. It, hey, look, there, I'm it's sitting like in the back. It's like there's something living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yes. It looks good. That airplane is, and it's going to fly like a, a miracle. Oh yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. That. The quality from the Air Force Labs is just outstanding. So. Oh yeah, they probably have been working on this for a few years already. I don't even need to look. Oh anymore. yeah, I'm done. I'm done. A Sky Five for you. A Sky Five for you. A Sky <laughs> Five for you. Sky Fives all around. It's time for the clip of the week. <laughs> Once again, Mr. Spark Smudge, he never fails to deliver. He never, never fails. fails to deliver. Uh, this one was clipped by Race Crown 21. Uh, it is titled Steam Off to Infinity and Beyond. <laughs> so to set this up, uh, this afternoon I challenged Sparky as he was just kind of cruising around an X-Plane to land his V-Tail on a carrier. To which he which accepted successfully did. and successfully did a really nice landing at night, mind you. Um, but then while goofing around on the carrier deck, this happened. I just, oh, it's the, <laughs> it's the catapult, it's man. Like oh my God, it's the, did you see that? It's the catapult, man. Wow. <laughs> the thing is. The VTEL, I don't know if we got caught wheel caught in that in that in that steam catapult because it doesn't have a it doesn't have a latch. Uh, there's there's <laughs> land, there is land over yeah, here. No, I don't no, know exactly. Yeah. Oh, there it is, oh. right there, right? Like that's where it catches. He's like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> and then you just see it on the screen, right? It's where is it? It says uh, uh, press brake oh. to release or something. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 
Dude, the speed. Wow. <laughs> Look at the speed go. <laughs> it would have kept on going till the speed of sound or something. That was oh pretty wow. God. Oh, Noodle, you are along for the ride on that one, bro. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was a little worried. Your name, Noodle, so it kind of droops off the edge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no it's really uh, really uh, wow well, after that happened i got to thinking watching a carrier video that you know they have to adjust the the catapults based on every jet that's on there it's weight and balance so it makes me wonder if if for a goof the military did if they were allowed to do it beef up a ga plane to launch off of a carrier if they could feasibly do it if they were to beef it up and then dial in the um, the launch, you know, to accommodate its weight. It, I would love to see that. We know it will never happen, but that would be some funny shit to see in real life. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever been done. Nah, it would technically. I mean, it would it would just shear the landing. I mean, the 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 nose gear would become like a, <laughs> like a cannonball coming out of a, a trebuchet or some shit like that. Just like. <laughs> And now off to worth mentioning, this is a speed round, ladies and gentlemen. All the things we have discussed in detail on prior uh, episodes or things that just are simply worth mentioning. Here we go. The Dovetail Forum Tag. Should we change it to Miscellaneous Sim? We did. We did. Thanks for your feedback, everybody. We did end up changing it to uh, Misc Sim. So now when you go and post about anything that's not X-Plane or P3D or DCS, you'll be using that tag. Uh, Flight Sim Store, servers down or question mark? Well, the answer to that is short. It's question mark still at this time. Yet another <laughs> week goes by. Uh, KVUO Pearson Field is now released by Orbex. Aerosoft Airbus A318-319 Professional Series to release in June. You know why that's in worth mentioning. Yeah, we're not going to commit to that one. FSDG Previews, Pilots of the Caribbean Part 2 St. Lucia. Balearic Islands Professional and Singles Islands are now available. That's by uh, Aerosoft, I believe. Yes, I believe Aerosoft. Uh, Black Box Simulations Previews the A330neo. We've got one screenshot. It's simply worth mentioning at this stage. Uh, Digital Design Tenerife South has been released. The Douglas DC-8 has been updated to 1.03. One of my favorite planes right now in sim. Head over and grab that if you own it. MFSG release Miyazaki Airport in the south of Japan. Some previews of the ATR-72 virtual cockpit by Milviz are now available on the website. Flight Sim Labs announces new super cool icing effects for the upcoming A319X. And update, Drovitsky Design Seattle Airports for P3D hitting 1.2. That is our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for another week of On Approach. Thanks to our host, Mr. Sparks Mudge, Mr. Noodle, Mr. Kevin. We look forward to catching you next week for possibly another slim week as we get closer to the Flight Sim Expo. I think people are going to kind of hold on to releases. So until then, keep the topics coming. Sky Five, everybody. Contact the New York Center, 128.3.